welcome to the Earth Rangers podcast. I'm Earth Ranger Emma. Earth Rangers! Earth Rangers! Earth Rangers! It's a beautiful day in Rangerland, and I'm ready to take you on another quest for the coolest new animal facts from around the world. Today, we're gonna get wet and muddy while we explore one of my favorite types of ecosystems. So I'm gonna go fetch my rubber boots. In the meantime, here's a little quiz to get you started. Which of these is not a real animal? The golden poison dart frog? The Malagasy rainbow frog? The flying vampire frog? The tomato frog? The Mongolian rabbit frog? You heard me. Four of these are real frog species, but one of them I totally made up. Think about it for a while, and at the end of this episode, we'll see if you got it right. Okay, I got my boots on. Meet me outside after the jingle. Wild and wacky animal facts. Wild and wacky animal facts. Ah, there you are. What a beautiful day to be outside. As you may have already guessed from the chorus of sounds around us, we're in a wetland. I'm standing here on the muddy shore beside a small pond that's surrounded by tall grass and next to the edge of a forest. The abundance of fresh water, cool shade, nutrients, and plenty of hiding spaces makes this a real hotspot for animals. As a matter of fact, wetlands are among the most productive ecosystems in the world, comparable to rainforests and coral reefs. Anything from microbes, plants, insects, amphibians, reptiles, birds, fish, and mammal species can be part of wetland ecosystems. I can actually see a bunch of different animal footprints in the muddy floor. Oh, I think this is from a deer, and and this one must be a coyote. It almost looks like a dog's paw print. But here, I'll snap a pic. And then I'll upload it to earthrangers.com slash podcast so that you guys can take a look and let me know what animal you think it is. Earth Rangers! Well, it's not really the most human-friendly habitat. Ugh, this mud feels more like quicksand, and... Right now, it feels more like a biological hotspot for mosquitoes. Ugh! But aside from that, wetlands are actually incredibly important for people, too. They help keep our water clean by filtering out the pollution, they protect us against flooding and drought, and they even protect us from climate change by absorbing greenhouse gases. And that's not... Whoa! Did you see that? I mean, hear that? A shiny green frog just leaped into the water right in front of me. Oh, that was so cool. And that frog got some big air. I guess they weren't lying when they said frogs can jump 20 times their own height. Can you imagine? That's like me jumping as high as a 10-story building. I mean, forget Spider-Man. Here comes Frog Lady. Hey, you know what I just realized? Frogs have lungs just like us, so how can they breathe underwater? I know I can't go longer than, like, a minute without taking a breath. Ready? (gasps) See? One minute on the dot. Wait, so how can frogs stay underwater for so long? Hmm. Time to assemble an... Animal Investigation Squad. Animal Investigation Squad! Oh, wait, wait. I remember now. They can absorb oxygen through their skin. Yeah, and I I think they can also do the same trick with drinking. I mean, when was the last time you saw a frog take a drink? Probably never, because they don't need to. They just absorb water through their skin. Pretty cool, eh? Now, let me see if I can find where that little guy went. Hmm, nothing. Oh, wait, wait, what's that? (gasps) I found a bunch of little tadpoles. Oh, it looks like they're already transforming into little frogs. I, I can see some small legs starting to develop. Hmm. The process where a tadpole turns into a frog is called metamorphosis, and it is an amazing transformation. Almost every organ has to change so that the tadpole can go from living underwater to living on land as an adult frog. It is such a difficult process, and the time when a frog is most vulnerable, so why do they do it? Why don't they just get born as tiny baby frogs and grow up like other animals do? What's up with the Transformers Act? Auto frogs, assemble! Let me see if I have a signal, and maybe I can dial in an expert.
Hello. Hello. Is this biologist Chris Rossing? Yeah, this is Chris. Hi there. This is Earth Ranger Emma. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. I have a bunch of questions about frogs. Do you think you can answer them for me? Yeah, absolutely. I love frogs. Okay. First question. Why are frogs so happy? Why are frogs so happy? Because they eat whatever bugs them. <laughs> That's a good one. No, that wasn't my real question, though. I have a real science question, and I hope you can help me answer it. I will try. Why do frogs go through metamorphosis? Oh, frogs go through metamorphosis for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of the main ones is that it's important for them to have different life stages to spread out the competition so that the juveniles don't compete with the adults and the adults don't eat or compete with the juveniles. Huh, so the babies eat different food than the adult frogs? That's right. You'll find that baby frogs, tadpoles, will swim in ponds and they almost exclusively eat plants and algae. And then when they turn into frogs, they pretty much just eat bugs. Hmm. Why don't they just get born as tiny baby frogs and grow up like other animals do? Well, there are a lot of frogs that have changed the way they go through metamorphosis. So lots of frogs actually have what they call direct development. So in that case, the tadpole turns into a frog while it's still inside the egg and then hatches out on land. Uh, lots of frogs do this if there's places where there isn't a lot of good water around or maybe if there's lots of fish or predators in the water that they want to avoid. And then they'll still spend their lives near the water because they're frogs, they have to. Uh, but then they behave quite differently. Hmm. How long does metamorphosis usually take? Well, the proce process of metamorphosis itself only takes a couple of days. But depending on the frog, they may stay as tadpoles for only a month or two, but some frogs stay as tadpoles for years and years. For years and years? That's right. Huh. So, it's, so it's just an advantage depending on what kind of other animals are around, where you want to spread out your life stage. Mm -hmm. Is it the same thing as when an insect goes through metamorphosis, like when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly? It's similar, but not exactly the same. So with insects, they'll form a hard chrysalis or pupae, and then inside the animal gets completely digested, essentially, and then reformed into its new adult bug stage. Frogs aren't quite that dramatic, so they go through a couple changes where their stomach changes to adapt from a plant-based diet to a bug-based diet, uh, their brain will change, so now they have to learn how to hop on land and find different types of food. They grow uh, legs and arms. They eat their tail, essentially, as they, they whoa, use the whoa. energy. They eat their tail? Yeah, they eat their tail. So, I mean, they don't chew on their tail, but it gets digested by the body, and then the energy stored in that becomes the fuel for the whole process. Wow, that is so neat. I feel like I know a lot more about frogs now. I'm glad. But I'm kind of curious. What exactly is your job? So I'm a senior aquarium biologist at the Vancouver Aquarium. So specifically, my specialty is the frogs. So I'm one of the guys who looks after all the frogs at the Vancouver Aquarium. Awesome. What would you say the best part of your job is? Uh, the best part of my job is definitely the fact that I get to work with endangered amphibians. When you get to breed them and uh, release them into the wild and know that you're helping make a difference and keep them alive where otherwise they might not be, it uh, feels really good. Wow, that's so important. Out of those endangered amphibians, which one is your favorite? My absolute favorite frog in the world right now is this little frog from Tanzania in Africa called the spray toad. Uh, they actually only found it when they were trying to build a dam. And this frog is found in just this small little spray zone at the base of a waterfall. And it's really neat because it doesn't have a tadpole stage, so it just has live birth. So it doesn't even have eggs that it lays that turn into frogs. It just gives birth to little frogs, which is pretty rare for an amphibian. Wait, just like mammals? That's right. It's just like a mammal. Huh. And so it's pretty neat. And the sad thing is, once they built this dam, the frogs actually went extinct in the wild. But luckily, some biologists saw that that would happen, and they took a bunch of animals out of the wild, and they were able to breed them. And so they built a big sprinkler system to recreate what the waterfall was doing, and they've been releasing them back into the wild for a few years now, and it looks like they're doing well. Oh, I'm so glad that biologists were able to save them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for answering all my questions. No worries. Nice talking to you. You too. Take care. Bye. Animal Investigation Squad. Another one of nature's mysteries solved. Man, I love science. It just makes so much sense.
Now I better head back to headquarters. I want to have enough time today to test our device. Oh, oh, there's that frog again. Psst. I'm going to try to catch it for a closer look. Woohoo! I got it! Might have got a little muddy there too, but no biggie. Let's take a look at you, buddy. I think it's actually a different frog from what I saw earlier. This one is pretty small and reddish brown with three dark stripes on its back. Let me check my wildlife guidebook. Let's see here. Looks like it's a western chorus frog. Very cool. It says here that they're nocturnal, so I was extremely lucky to find one during the daytime. Did you know that one of the ways you can tell a male frog from a female is by looking at their ears? Yep. If the ears are larger than the eyes, it's a male. If they're smaller, it's a female. So this seems to be a male. Oh, there's another difference. Male frogs are usually the ones that croak. They do it to attract the females, but I can't say I find it very attractive. Good thing I'm not a frog. But what if he is actually an enchanted prince? I feel like I'd look great in a castle. I'd have a butler, all the cakes I can eat. Ugh, nonsense, Emma, come on, you're a scientist. But hold on just a minute. Hello? Oh, hi, Chris, it's Emma again. Oh, hello again. I have one more question I forgot to ask you. Sure, what's that? Okay, um, here goes. I was wondering if it was at all possible that a frog might ever metamorphosize into a prince. Into a what? A prince that you could kiss. A prince. <laughs> no, that's not a thing. I'm not sure where you'd get that idea from. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, I was just asking for, you know, a friend. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Bye. Well, buddy, I guess I might as well let you go. Farewell, my prince. All right. Well, I'm going to make my way back to headquarters. I'm going to hand you guys over to Captain Conservation for a quick message. Attention, please. This is Captain Conservation with a very important announcement. Do you think amphibians are awesome? Well, you're certainly right. Can you guess my favorite group of amphibians? Let me give you a hint. Their name comes from the Greek word for fire lizard. Salamanders. This year, Earth Rangers teamed up with the Nature Conservancy of Canada to protect a 10,000-year-old peat bog in Covey Hill, Quebec, and provide a safe habitat for these cool little creatures. Find out more about salamanders and this amazing conservation project in the show notes at earthrangers.com slash podcast. Thanks, Captain. Good speech as usual. Now... I'm back, and I have my friend Lily the Falcon here, along with my other friend Laura the, um, person. Hi! And it's time for some science. Okay. Guys, just give me a second while I charge up the device. Initiating boot sequence. And as you know, I have to charge up the algorithms by feeding it some recordings of people impersonating animals. Check out these. Our amazing listeners came through once again and sent in their animal impersonations. Cool, let's hear them. My name is Brody. This is what an eagle sounds like. Wow, someone paid attention a few episodes ago. Awesome! Hi, Earth Rangers. That's a dog barking. And that's a wolf howling. <laughs> nice job. Clearly going for some of the classics here. My name's Ingrid, and I'm going to show you a sound of a hard walk. What hog, I mean. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that was borderline rude. (laughs) But hey, it did the trick. All systems are go. The device is ready. For everyone who's really confused right now, we are testing the prototype of an invention that will let humans communicate with animals. 
Also, just start listening on episode one, okay? Seriously, who starts on episode six? Okay, I am literally shaking with anticipation now. Here we go. Lily, are you ready? Yeah. Well, did she just talk to me? Yeah. OMG! D- does that mean she can understand me? Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Lily, do you want to say something to me? Yeah, please. Okay, what do you have to say? Uh, probable impossibilities are to be preferred to improbable possibilities. Huh? Aristotle. Ever heard of him? What? Okay, let's try this. What bird can fly in space? Uh, what? The Millennium Falcon. Wait a minute, you didn't even squawk that time. And hey, I know that voice. Steve! That was too funny. What are you doing under my desk with that microphone? I plugged it into the machine or device or whatever you call it as a prank. Does that mean that that the device doesn't actually work? No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I mean, it's a genius idea and it's an incredible design, but it's missing something. (sighs) I kind of figured. But it would have been so cool to understand what animals are saying and thinking. I guess we'll just have to keep trying to understand them the old-fashioned way. By careful observation and through scientific research. After all, that's what wildlife biologists do best. And since animals don't have a voice, it's up to us as Earth Rangers to speak up for them. (laughs) Hey, don't think I forgot about the quiz question I asked you at the beginning of the show. You guys should know a lot more about frogs by now. So let's see if you can guess which one of these frog species I completely made up. Here's the list. The golden poison dart frog, the Malagasy rainbow frog, the flying vampire frog, the tomato frog, the Mongolian rabbit frog. I'll give you a second to decide. Now let's see. The golden poison dart frog totally exists and is one of the most poisonous creatures in the world. Well, maybe I should have done my research before I started scooping up frogs left, right, and center. That could have been bad. The Malagasy rainbow frog also exists and is as colorful as the name suggests. The flying vampire frog sounds much scarier than it is and it doesn't actually suck anyone's blood, but it does exist. The tomato frog also exists and is bright red just as you would expect, which leaves the Mongolian rabbit frog is my own silly invention. Ta-da! Well, guys, we've reached the end of the episode. And you know what? We have reached the end of our first season. But don't panic. We already have some amazing stuff planned for season two. And until then, I'm sure we'll have a few bonus episodes now and then. Of course, that means it's super duper important for you to subscribe now more than ever before, so that you'll always know when a new episode is available. All right, Earth Rangers. Thanks for listening, and keep on ranging. Earth Rangers!